Hello friends, followers and channel members, welcome to another video here in Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020. In today's video, I'm going to be addressing many of the problems that some of you have been uh, letting me know about with regards to flying the Airbus A320NX from Fly-by-Wire. Now, since Sim Update 5, a whole host of you have had major problems with this aircraft, but a lot of them, there are workarounds, and a lot of them are just simple things. In this video, what I want to get you doing is back flying this aircraft. If you have got any problems, please leave a comment down below, and I'll do my best to come back and answer them if what you're about to see doesn't help you and solve the problems that you're having. Let's have a look. So, number one, a very common problem is people are loading into the Airbus A320 and finding that all the features they're expecting to see aren't there. There's no tablet. The cell cal plate is also missing. Things don't look right. This is because you have loaded the wrong aircraft. Another big giveaway of this is the fact that you won't be able to load the fly-by-wire livery because the fly-by-wire livery does not exist for the default aircraft. The next problem some of you are having is when you load in and you know you've got the correct fly-by-wire A320X aircraft loaded is you're experiencing strange problems. Maybe the tablet is looking white or it won't turn on. Uh, screens may be flickering. And basically, the aircraft is completely unstable. The reason behind this is you have got an old version, an old version of the mod installed now this could happen in two ways number one you could be using the stable build a little bit more on that in a moment uh, but you could also have old packages still installed in the simulator itself if you've downloaded the fly-by-wire mod through the fly-by-wire installer on their website and you're still having problems, then make sure that you go and check you haven't got any of the old versions still installed in your simulator. The easiest way to do this is to go to the Profile and Content Manager. Throughout this, scroll through and ensure that you haven't got an A320NX from Fly-by-Wire listed in here. If you've removed it out of your community folder and you can still see an A32NX lifted, listed anywhere on, uh, on the content manager, then you will need to uninstall it. Chances are, if it is listed here, it's because you've downloaded the A32NX from the marketplace at some point in the past. S Content that you download from the marketplace is not installed in your community folder. So you can't just delete it from the community folder. You have to delete it from the content manager. If you've got an older version in your content manager and then you download the newer version using the fly-by-wire installer, the two will conflict and you'll end up getting crashed to desktops and it won't work correctly. So make sure to do a full reinstall. You have no fly-by-wire products in your content manager. You have an empty community folder and then you can download the latest version using the fly-by-wire installer from their website. Fly-by-Wire have three versions available for download. There is the stable build, version 0.6.3, the developer build, and now, once again, the experimental build, which is now being updated after a, uh, a break while they worked on the custom flight plan manager. What is the difference between these three versions? Let's quickly explain. So at the moment, following sim update number five, the stable version, version 0.6.3, does not work. If you are trying to fly the fly-by-wire version with this stable build installed, it will not work. You will have crashed the desktops and the aircraft will be unstable and do a whole host of strange things, which can be very frustrating if you don't know the reason for it. So the stable build, we don't want to touch that at the moment. A new version, version 0.7.0, is on the cards to be released very soon. And I have streamed this when we were doing a test flight with it. It seemed to work very, very nice. When this version does come out, this is the edition of the A32NX, which you will find in the marketplace, which hopefully means the Xbox users will also be able to download this as well. The new stable version, when it comes out, also has the custom autopilot. Now, the custom autopilot at the moment currently is only found in the developer version. The developer version as well also has the latest features which are constantly updated, usually several times a day some days. 
So the developer version is the one which for now most of you should be flying until the release of the new stable version. There is, of course, a third option, which is the experimental version. This has recently been re-released after a break, and the fly by team have been working very hard on their custom flight plan manager. What does this mean? Well, it means that if you are currently flying the developer version, you may have seen the horrible bug in the flight plan manager um, when you're flying, getting close to your uh, destination airport and the waypoints jump to the, uh, the final approach fix of the runway or it takes you straight to the runway bypassing all of the waypoints on the arrival route which is very very frustrating particularly if you are flying on VATSIM because your aircraft starts to veer off in the wrong direction and you have a mild panic and uh, suddenly you have to work out what to do. Also, there are times when your flight plan, when you've been editing it, trying to clear out waypoints and tidy up the, uh, the flight route, that the flight plan just disintegrates and disappears entirely. That's no good, um, but this is all down to the way that Microsoft Flight Simulator is currently coded. What the experimental version does then is it uses FlybyWire's own coding of the flight plan manager, meaning that we no longer have the aircraft jumping waypoints, you can edit stars, you can delete waypoints without anything happening to the flight plan, it won't disappear. Uh, but there are some systems of the experimental version which are currently inoperative. For instance, TCAS doesn't work and the weather radar doesn't work. Personally for me, I would be happy to fly the experimental version more on VATSIM than any other version because I know that the aircraft is going to fly the flight plan that I've got in front of me without it doing anything crazy. So those are the three versions, one of them currently inoperable, um, that are available from Fly-By-Wire. So don't touch the stable build until a new release has, uh, has come out. If you are flying the experimental version of the Fly-By-Wire A32NX, then you may have noticed that the flight plan itself, particularly at your arrival destination, looks a little bit of a mess. The good news is, don't worry. This is perfectly normal at the moment, whilst the fly by -wire team are still developing this. The reason this happens is because as you are flying, the computer, the navigation computer, is trying to work out how it is going to perform the approach at the current speed your aircraft is flying at. Well, if you're at Mach 0.78 and it's trying to work out how it's going to get you in to your approach nicely, it's not going to work. You've got far too much airspeed and the computer at the moment can't take into account that by the time you are actually on the approach, you're going to be flying much, much slower. What you'll tend to find is as you approach your airport, this will all work itself out quite nicely. So don't panic too much if you see a complete mess on the navigation display. It is, however, also very important to make sure that from the start, you've corrected the correct initial approach fix for your star. Another bug that many of you have been reporting is on pushback, all of your screens go blank. So here we are, sat, ready to begin our push. We've just spent goodness knows how long preparing all the aircraft. Everything's looking well. We're about to set off. All the passengers are loaded and we get the clearance from air traffic control to push. We're on our way back and then suddenly, boom, all the screens go black and you're left wondering what on earth is the problem. This is not a bug most of the time. If you look up on the overhead panel, you'll have noticed that you were getting your power from the ground power unit. The external power was connected. As you push back, the external power's cable has popped out. You haven't turned on your batteries and you haven't started the APU. This means that the aircraft no longer has any source of power. Make sure these are on before you push back Otherwise, indeed, your aircraft's going to lose power and all the screens are going to go blank. Another issue I'm being getting told about from many of you is low frames per second, low frame rates at airports such as Gatwick or Amsterdam. Um, these are really, really detailed airports, at least Gatwick is if you use the very popular mod available from flightsim.to. There are a ton of objects that your graphics processor is having to work with. So if you've got a high level of detail in the objects or setup, 
then you're probably going to struggle and you'll see that frames are a lot lower when flying the A32NX. Remembering of course the A32NX is quite a big complicated aircraft compared to the default aircraft. One thing you can do which will help close some frames back is just turn off the first officer's screens. There's no one sat there, there's no one reading them in the simulator. So turn those off and that is half the work that the GPU needs to do for displaying the screens inside the flight deck. So you may see some performance improvements if you do this. Another question I'm being asked quite a lot, um, which actually isn't really to do with fly-by-wire, but it is a, uh, a major point which I thought I'd bring up in this video, is that the ILS options that are available when planning your arrival at your destination airport. You can see here, we've got different options. We've got ILS 25 left Zulu and Yankee. Occasionally we also get X-Ray as well. Uh, lots of different options. So which one do we pick? By default, it is always Zulu, unless our tra air traffic control or the ATIS is telling you something different. It's always Zulu. What's the difference between them? Usually very, very little. Um, the reason that they have more than one sometimes is that because if the ILS Zulu uses a, a specific VOR or NDB or a waypoint uh, in order to bring you in and it becomes unserviceable, as it does in the real world at time when they have to do repairs, you can no longer fly that specific approach. So instead, you have to go on to the next one, uh, the Yankee or the X-Ray. But to keep things simple, here in the simulator, always choose the Zulu version. Next up is a really annoying bug, and I experienced it in a live stream for the first time the, uh, the other day. When cruising, we want to get our weather, which is great the, the, the way that we can do this now on the McDo. Big shout out to Fly by Wire for making this possible. But unfortunately, since sim update number five, if we decide that we're going to print off that meta weather report, the simulator kind of implodes. So for now, unfortunately, resist the urge to print off the weather because the printer is currently in up. Another bug which I experienced for the first time again on a live stream a, a couple of days ago uh, was on arrival. We were literally around 50 feet from touchdown and the auto thrust spooled the engines up, making it impossible to come in and land safely. Um, this is really annoying, but there is a way around that. This only happens when we are in managed speed. So what we can do instead is we can select our own landing speed. This is available from the approach page of the McDo. You can see the V app uh, listed here. Um, all we're going to do is then go up to the flight control unit. Instead of having the speed on manage speed, we'll pull the speed bug and select the uh, V app speed. And at this point now, the aircraft will hold the speed and not increase its thrust. It will maintain that speed. So hopefully that bug is, uh, is eradicated soon. But for now, there is a workaround. Finally then, a lot of you have got in touch with me uh, regarding this next bug, but unfortunately I have to tell you, it's not a bug, it's, uh, it's pilot error. You've flown your beautiful flight, you're coming in for arguably the most satisfying part of your flight, that is of course the, uh, the landing. And as we come in, we make a beautiful touchdown. We're on the center line. We're in the landing zone. It's a nice touchdown rate as well. Uh, we start to slow down. We've got our reverse thrust. We cut the reverse thrust. And then once our aircraft comes to a stop, which usually it shouldn't do on the runway. You want to get off that active runway as soon as possible. But the aircraft has come to a complete stop. And no matter what we do, we cannot get the aircraft to move again. It's stuck. We can't uh, We can't vacate the runway. You don't want this happening if you're on VATSIM. Um, there is a simple reason for this, and that is because you were using the auto brake, which is fine, but the auto brake does need to be um, disabled. This can be done one of two ways. You can push the button, or you can just tap the, uh, tap the foot brakes if you find that uh, easier, as I do when we're uh, on the rollout. It is actually part of the landing flows, making sure that you disable the, uh, the auto brake before, uh, before coming to a complete stop. Because as I said, you want to get off that runway, you don't want to stop on it. 
So there is a list of 10 things that lots of you got in touch with me about over the last few weeks. Hopefully this video has gone some way to getting you back flying the fantastic fly-by-wire A32NX. A final reminder, don't fly that stable build version until a new version comes out. Stick with the developer or the experimental. If you still have any questions or you're still having problems, please do leave a comment down below and, uh, and I'll get back to you hopefully with a, little, uh, with a solution to uh, the problem you're having. If it's a more complicated problem, then please do join our Discord server where you can share screenshots with us and there's a great community on there and we'll uh, all come together to hopefully get you flying this fantastic aircraft once again. Thank you so much for watching. Please do hit the like button on the video to help other people find it and of course uh, you can also subscribe and turn on the notifications bell so you don't miss any future content from the channel thanks very much for watching and i'll see you all again very soon bye bye for now